Billy sighed. Whether he liked it or not, he had to go to work. No one would earn money for him. His mom only had medication for two more days. He needed to work hard today. He had to take a taxi because here, payment was made daily. It was convenient for them. They used his mom's pension for rent and some necessary purchases, and they lived on the money he earned from driving a taxi. Once upon a time, everything had been different for him. So different that if someone had told him he would be a taxi driver, he would have just laughed in their face. His smartphone beeped on the dashboard. The first order came in. Billy looked at the screen, pressed accept, and headed to the address. He couldn't say he hated being a taxi driver. Like any job, it had its pros and cons. Some days had more pros than others. Of course, if he had worked in a factory or on a construction site, he would probably earn much more. But there were several reasons why he chose this profession. A lot of people took taxis, and Billy hoped he would someday meet the person he had been searching for so long. He and his mom had moved to this city after learning that Isabel lived here. Isabel was his ex-wife. They had an ugly breakup 18 years ago. He was to blame for everything, but he only found out about it 15 years later. When he was out of work, he often indulged in memories. And to have a night pass without thinking about Isabel was something that hadn't happened in many years. He understood perfectly well that Isabel was probably long married, but he just wanted to apologize. Nearly 20 years ago, Billy got married. He married a beautiful girl who seemed to him the universe. The whole universe. Isabel grew up in an orphanage. As his mother immediately said, she wouldn't bring a penny into the family. Billy was very hurt that these two women, who were so dear to him, couldn't get along. His mother disliked Isabel from the very first day they met. She even hugged Billy at the wedding but didn't even look at his wife. Isabel was so hurt that she burst into tears. Billy, why is she like that to me? I haven't done anything wrong to her. Sweetheart, just endure a little longer. You must understand, you're her enemy. You took her only son away from her. Do you think it's all because of that? Of course, there are no other reasons and there can't be. Isabel smiled. Of course, I'll wait. She's your mom after all. Maybe someday I'll be jealous of our son too. She hugged Billy and tried to behave in a way that would irritate her mother-in-law as little as possible. They lived separately. By that time, Billy was already a young but good specialist. He was assigned an apartment for work. The salary was very decent, and the man insisted that his wife stay at home. And this, by the way, also didn't sit well with Mrs. Viola. She couldn't accept that her son's salary now went not to her, but to this nobody girl. And anyway, she didn't want such a future for her Billy. She prepared another wife for him. Her daughter's friend. A very nice girl who would never say a word against her, would listen to everything and do everything as she said. But Billy dug her out somewhere. She didn't even want to call her by name. She hated her so much. Isabel, on the other hand, loved Billy very much, loved her little apartment, and was generally happy with her life. She didn't sit idly at home. She studied the market. One day, after setting dinner before her husband, she sat down opposite him. Billy, I need to talk to you very seriously. To talk and consult. Of course, Isabel, I'm listening. That's when Isabel told him about her idea. At first, he didn't take it seriously, but Isabel laid out all her calculations in front of him. They stayed up late into the night, went to bed only at dawn. And the next morning, Isabel began to put her ideas into practice. Billy said he didn't want to get into business himself, but he would support his wife in any way he could. 
Her plan seemed foolproof to him. And it turned out to be just that. In a few years, Isabel had a small but strong business of her own. Her mother-in-law quieted down. Or rather, she quieted down in her war with Isabel while her friends complained with her daughter. How cunning she is. Not every woman would think of starting her own business with her son's money and put everything in her name. Now she'll drain him of all his money, and Billy won't even be able to buy medicine for his mom. Viola, of course, greatly exaggerated. Billy had long been fully supporting her. Isabel not only bought all her medications, paid for the apartment, but also often came to clean and cook. The girl dreaded such days. The whole time she was there, she felt heavy nervous tension. Her mother-in-law never refused her help. But all the time Isabel was with her, she sat silently, lips pursed. Not a single word. At first, Isabel tried to communicate somehow, tell something, talk, but then, seeing those pursed lips, she stopped even trying. She would come, do what was necessary, and leave. Billy had just arrived at the address. Memories had to temporarily retreat to the far corner of consciousness. Good afternoon. Hello. How long can I expect your taxi? The man glanced at his phone screen. You ordered a taxi six minutes ago. Why are you snapping at me? I called the taxi with my own money, so I'd like to get it right away. The chubby lady sat down first. The young woman, only after she closed the door behind her, walked around the car and sat on the other side. From their conversation, Billy understood that she was the bride and her mother-in-law. And the mother-in-law, without embarrassment, belittled the girl as much as she could. When they arrived at their destination, the woman immediately told Billy, We were driven like firewood. Late. Who let you, young man, near the car at all? Billy didn't answer, but he smiled at the girl and said, Run, no love can stand such treatment from a mother-in-law anyway. The chubby woman turned around to tell the driver everything she thought about him, but the girl smiled at him, closed the door, and Billy sped off. In the rearview mirror, he watched for a long time as that same mother-in-law waved her arms. A new order came in. It was quite a journey to get there. But the order was for a specific time, so Billy drove calmly. Memories invaded his mind again. On that day, Isabel bought a car, not because she wanted to look luxurious, but because it was inconvenient for Billy to drive her around. He was always at work, and Isabel had to travel a lot. Of course, she consulted with her husband first, but she forgot about her mother-in-law. Viola couldn't stand such an attitude toward herself. She came to them the moment she found out about the purchase. You're living it up? Buying yourself a car? And let mom starve to death, huh? Isabel stood up. And to you, Mrs. Viola, good evening. Will you join us for dinner? No, I'll just sit in the corner. Where to? In general, then, mom caused a real scandal with heart attacks and spikes and blood pressure. Neither Billy nor Isabel could understand what she wanted. And when Viola said that as long as the business was registered in Isabel's name, she would wait for her to leave her husband and run away, then everything became clear. And Isabel found nothing better to say then. What nonsense, I can reassign everything to Billy tomorrow, I don't care. She fully trusted her husband, but he didn't live up to her trust. Billy had just arrived at the address. Memories had to retreat again. It was a good thing because when Billy got to the most important part, his mood would drop. Everything around became gloomy, and he didn't want to work, let alone talk to passengers. This time, a slightly tipsy group loaded into his car. He couldn't stand such people, so he tried not to work on weekends, if at all, just for a day. 
He looked at the app, cash payment. But he was sure problems were inevitable. And the amount turned out to be quite usual. But there was nothing to be done, he went. The group was noisy, arguing among themselves the whole way. Billy indicated that his teeth would crumble when they were clenched. They finally arrived. He turned to the one sitting next to him, immediately understanding why. Five SEC, boss, just going to pick up the money. I'll leave a bag with you here, literally up to the second floor and back. Billy waited for ten minutes. Then he took the bag. That's exactly it. In the bag were crumpled newspapers, just to give volume. He spat and even cursed. It seems that today wasn't going to be a good day from the very beginning. After about two hours of work, there was a lull. Billy moved into the shade. He knew that it would be quiet for about an hour now. On other days, if he was close to home, he would stop for a snack. Today he didn't feel like it. He closed his eyes. Isabel did indeed transfer her business to him, even though Billy was categorically against it. Isabel, why do I need extra hassle? I don't understand. Billy, but your mom will be calmer this way. Are we really going to argue with her over this little thing? Well, if she wants it this way, let it be. Believe me, I have no desire to listen to her complaints about this either. Isabel, don't be upset with her. Billy, I'm not upset anymore. I just think there's no escaping it. She's a burden to you. Everything is fine, really. It's just that I have very little time to argue about this too. So they left it at that. Billy soon forgot altogether that he had any business on him. Isabel handled everything herself, but she still managed at home. He suggested hiring a maid to his wife, but she laughed. Are you out of your mind? Do you want Viola to eat me alive? Yes, Billy hadn't thought about it. His mother had now chosen a different tactic. She completely stopped pestering Isabel and switched completely to her son. Billy, aren't you interested in where your wife is? It's already nine, and she's still somewhere hanging out. Mom, she's not hanging out. She's working. Of course, she's working. Everyone knows where. Mom, what are you talking about? Isabel has her own business. She has to work a lot. Billy, you're just so naive. Everyone's laughing behind your back, and you're like a calf. Billy got angry, hung up. Such calls were every day. He even feared to imagine what it would be like if his mother lived with them. Daily calls, some hints, did their job. And Billy began to think. Maybe there's some truth in his mother's words? He watched Isabel closely. She behaved completely naturally, and his mother continued to drip into his mind. One day he came home, and Isabel was already home. It was so surprising that Billy was even scared. Isabel, something happened? Yes and no. The chicken will be ready soon, and I just finished making the salad. Your mom will come, and I invited her too. Did I miss something? Do we have some kind of date today? Yes, dear, but just be a little more patient. You'll find out everything very soon. Fifteen minutes later, his mother appeared. Her lips were pursed in dissatisfaction. I hope you have a real reason, otherwise I had to drag myself across the whole city. Isabel smiled. Mrs. Viola, I ordered you a taxi with air conditioning. What inconvenience did you endure during the trip? The mother-in-law grumpily dropped her bag and walked into the room. Everyone sat down at the table. Isabel stood up. Today is a joyful day for me. I want to announce that we will soon have an addition to our family. I'm pregnant. There was a pause at the table. 
Isabel looked around at her husband and mother-in-law in confusion. Aren't you happy? The mother-in-law snorted. Well, there you go. What did I tell you? Such a wife should be driven out the door. Isabel sat down. I don't understand. Billy turned to her. You see, Isabel, I can't have children because of an illness I had as a child. What do you mean you can't? Then where did mine come from? That's what I'm wondering. Who was the kind uncle who helped us with this matter? At first, Isabel didn't understand what Billy was talking about, but then it started to dawn on her. Billy, what are you saying? This is nonsense. Let's go to the hospital. Let's do all the necessary tests. Can you even entertain the thought that I cheated on you? Isabel, what tests? What are you talking about? Do you want to embarrass me even more? Mom was right. She was right about everything. You shouldn't have let you into this business. Viola looked at Isabel triumphantly. What? Couldn't you fool my son around your finger once again? Damn it. I always said that women like you can't be good wives. Isabel jumped up. Tears were in her eyes. What are you saying? What nonsense are you talking about? This is Billy's child, and it can't be any other way. What nonsense, Billy. We need to go to the doctor, do a DNA test, finally. Billy was so crushed that he didn't even want to talk to Isabel. How could she? He loves her so much. Such betrayal. Oh, it hurts so much in my chest. And suddenly Isabel froze. Wait. If you were sure that you couldn't have children, why didn't you tell me about it? After all, we are husband and wife. Were you planning to hide it for so long? Isabel, it doesn't matter now. I'm going to my mom's, and you have three days to pack your things and disappear from my apartment forever. I'm filing for divorce today. Isabel looked at him and couldn't believe it. How can this even be? But Billy got up, took his mother by the hand, and they left the apartment. She tried to call him, tried to talk, but Billy didn't want to hear anything. Then Isabel said, Fine. Since you don't believe me anyway, nothing good will come out of this. Give me back my company, and let's part ways. But you will regret it very much. Very much, Billy. The company? What company? The one that caused you to cheat on me? No way. I'll sell it for peanuts. Billy, this is my company. We'll need something to live on with the baby. These are not my problems, asked the baby's daddy. Or maybe there were so many of them that you don't know who exactly is the father. Isabel looked at him with eyes full of tears. What's wrong with you, Billy? We always loved each other and always trusted each other. Well, you trusted too much. I hope you've packed your things. Get out of here. Isabel got up and left. She didn't take anything with her. Absolutely nothing. She didn't even take her clothes. Mom moved in with him the next day. How gleefully she gathered Isabel's things and took them out to the trash. It had to be seen. Billy, who suffered greatly, couldn't help it. Mom, why do you hate Isabel so much? She's not a match for you, but Bella is a completely different matter. There will be no Bella here. I'm not insisting, I'm just saying. You're Isabel, see how quickly she grew horns on you. You think she didn't take anything out of pride? No, nothing of the sort, she just has somewhere to go. Billy understood that there was a certain meaning in his mother's words. It was very painful, very offensive. Isabel didn't show up for the divorce. Billy was told to come back in a month. And she didn't come back in a month either. They divorced, 
and Billy started to learn to live without Isabel. Mom was always there, supporting him, trying. He was very grateful to her. Two months later, he sold Isabel's company. He didn't care at all what would happen to his child next. But then the troubles began. Isabel appeared in his dreams almost every day. In the morning he woke up broken, angry, and his mother kept talking about Bella. Billy felt like he was about to snap and kill someone. A year later, he was demoted. And another year later, they asked him to write a statement and vacate the apartment. Billy just couldn't understand what was going on. He literally burst into the boss's office. What's going on? Am I doing a bad job? You, Billy, don't notice anything. Not only do you think about everything except work, but you also lash out at everyone. We don't need someone like you in the company. We need someone stable. Get your nerves treated and then come back and listen to advice. Move out from your mom's. The boss was aware of his affairs. For a while, he and Isabel even visited him at his place. Isabel became very close with the boss's wife, and now everything started to make sense to Billy. So that's what she's been whispering in your ears. And how she gave birth to her partying child. And maybe you are the father of that child? The boss looked at Billy strangely. And you really are an idiot. Get out of my office. If you don't write the statement today, you'll be dismissed tomorrow. Billy slammed the door so hard that the glass in the office shook. He immediately wrote the statement and went home. His mother greeted him with surprise. Why are you home so early? I got fired, now we'll have to live on what you earn. Don't talk nonsense, you know my health doesn't allow me to work. Health? And I don't remember you being hospitalized or undergoing any complex surgery. What's wrong with your health, Mom? Don't you dare talk to me like that. Mom, pack your things, they're evicting me from the apartment. How are they evicting you? What are you talking about? Well, if you haven't forgotten, it's a company apartment. It's all because of her, or rather, because of you. The damn woman, we already got rid of her, but she still tries to spite us. Billy grabbed his head and went to the room. There, he collapsed on the bed for the first time and thought about how everything was fine when Isabel was around, but as soon as she was gone, everything started to fall apart. Maybe he shouldn't have listened to his mother. Maybe he should have gone to the doctor, figured everything out. Is it really possible? By the way, nobody ever told him he was infertile. Although, why nobody? Mom? He sat on the bed and went into the living room. Mom, could you please show me where it should say that I can't have children? You didn't just make it up, did you? Of course not. Everyone who was sick in childhood can't have children. Mom, did you diagnose it yourself? Billy, don't talk nonsense. And anyway, I don't have time for this now. I need to pack. His mother quickly went to the kitchen and Billy started to get dressed. No need to guess. He'll go to the hospital now and find out everything there. If necessary, he'll take tests. His mother looked at him with a worried look. Although why should she worry? She just wanted what was best. Isabel is a good-for-nothing, not a match for Billy. He returned home in the evening in such a state that he could barely stand on his feet. He entered the kitchen and put the bottle on the table. Well, Mom, tell me, how did you even come up with such an idea? I, an idiot, believed it. Where am I supposed to find Isabel now, my child? How do I beg for forgiveness? Billy, Isabel is not right for you. I wish you well. Yeah, now everything is fine with us, right, Mom? No Isabel, no job, 
Child nowhere to be found. Apartment being taken away. Everything's great, Mom. Everything will be fine. You just need to get this nonsense out of your head. Mom, why do you hate her so much? Viola hesitated. Honestly, she didn't even know herself. She just didn't want Isabel to be near her son. I'll call you a taxi now. Go home, Mom. Billy. No, that's it, enough. I need to find housing and then look for Isabel. But you can live with me. No, thank you. We will never live together again. Viola began to cry. How will I be alone? And what will I live on? Mom, go to work. Sometimes it's useful to work, and you're only 50. Then he moved out and started looking for Isabel. Money was disappearing and there were no traces of his wife to be found. Then his mother had a stroke, which paralyzed her arm and leg. He had to return to take care of her, and he had to go work at the factory. As a simple worker, Billy no longer hoped to find Isabel. So many years had passed. His mother was still barely hobbling around the house. Her minimal disability pension went entirely to medications. And one day he accidentally ran into the wife of his former boss. She called out to him herself. Billy? He was just coming back from work. He turned around, wanted to leave, but changed his mind, stopped. Hello. Billy, it's been so long since we've seen each other. Ten, thirteen years? Yeah, about that. How are you? How's life? Married? No, not married. Living with my mom, she can't get back to normal life after the stroke. So, I'm working. Yes, Billy, life is a complicated thing. The woman paused, then said, I saw Isabel. She came half a year ago. Billy even jumped. Isabel? Where is she? How? I've been trying to find her for so long. She lives in another city. That's all she told me. She has a daughter. Showed me a photo. She looks a lot like you. And then Billy couldn't hold back. He sat down and cried. What have I done? Ruined my life and Isabel's. Idiot. But you're right. Idiot's like you need to be sought out. I'll go there. I'll find her. I'll apologize. She's probably married, but I'll at least ask for forgiveness. Oh, Billy, how will you find her? The city is huge. I don't know, but I'll find her. He immediately told his mother that they were selling everything and moving. She was silent for a while, then said, Maybe you're right. Just don't leave me, please. What will I do without you? So they ended up in that city. They bought a small apartment in a barracks with all the money they had and from selling his mother's apartment. There wasn't enough money for more. Billy didn't know where to start the search. He didn't even know Isabel's last name. Did she keep her husband's name or did she change it back to her maiden name? If she took his name, then finding her would be impossible. There are plenty of Joneses, but what if it's her own name? Isabel's last name was given, apparently, by cheerful people, and her passport said Clark. She didn't know her real last name, so they gave her this one. If she reverted to her maiden name after the divorce, then there's at least some chance. He rang the doorbell. An order came in. The heat was starting. He wasn't even paid for one order. There were a couple more unpaid ones, so he could go home now. He wouldn't earn anything anyway. He was in no mood at all. All these memories. He's been driving a taxi for over two years, and there's still no progress. Not even a trace of Isabel. Although, why be surprised? 
The city is huge. You can walk around your whole life and never meet. The next passenger turned out to be a grandmother who smelled so strongly of Valerian that Billy almost choked. After her, he even had to get out of the car to air it out. Useless again. It seemed to him that in 15 minutes of driving, the smell had just soaked into the upholstery. The next passengers kept nagging him about the smell the whole way. Billy felt like he was losing it. And it's only lunchtime. By evening, it'll be even worse. Another order. A mother with two kids. These two kids managed to mess up his entire car with their shoes, break the headrest on the passenger seat. And at the end of the trip, one of the boys vomited right on the seat. The mother said it was all his fault because the car smelled unbearably of valerian. Billy didn't say a word. He just knew he couldn't open his mouth. He needed to clench his teeth tightly and stay silent, or else he'd explode at everyone. He pulled into the car wash, lost an hour while washing the car, went back on the line again. Two orders were quite normal. The passengers were silent, sober, and paid for the ride. But then he encountered a moral monster. The whole way, he was instructing how to drive, grumbling about picking up idiots in a taxi, and then being afraid for his life. In the end, he wrote a negative review about the company, and Billy got fined. The day didn't bring any profit, it went into the negatives. It was time to go home. If the day didn't start well, there was no point in trying. He sat for a while, lately, earnings weren't great, and nerves were frayed. No, he'd try a couple more orders. Inside, he was boiling with anger. A young girl, around 16, got into the car. They had already driven a kilometer when the girl in the back seat screamed, Oops, I forgot my wallet at home. Billy expected something like that, given how the day had been. He abruptly pressed the brakes, silently got out of the car, opened the door where the forgetful miss was sitting, grabbed her by the shoulder, and simply yanked her out of the car. She looked at him in fright. And he yelled, that's it. I don't pick up beggars. He slammed the door, got behind the wheel, and sped away. The girl tried to wave her hands after him, but no chance. Billy was driving and thinking, just to get home. Just not to kill anyone on the way. He parked the car and went up. Tea was spilled all over the table in the kitchen. Apparently, his mother was trying to do something. She walked a little, though her arm didn't work at all. Billy wiped the table, didn't need anything, just went and lay down on the couch. Apparently, he even slept a little, woke up in the evening. He lay there for a while, of course, it was not right. He needed to pull himself together, needed to work. It was nine in the evening, so he could go out on the line for an hour until midnight. He went to his mother. She was watching TV. Mom, do you need anything? I'm going. No, I don't. Will you be gone long? I don't know. We'll see. He approached the car, opened it, and only then noticed a small purse on the back seat. It seemed to belong to the girl who forgot her wallet. Damn, now he had to deal with this purse too. He picked it up. Phone, documents, passport. Well, at least that's good. They'll look at the registration. He opened the passport and froze. His hands turned cold, trembled, but the girl in the photo was looking at him. She looked at him with her eyes, and next to it was written Clark Agatha. Billy almost dropped the passport. What is this? It couldn't be. It's impossible. There was only one thing left to do to go to this address and find out everything. Although, what's there to find out? Everything was already clear. Everything. He put the purse down and started the car. The other end of the city. What difference did it make where it was? 
He needed to get there quickly. He drove into the courtyard. A large, fairly new building. He looked at the apartment once more and went to the entrance. He stopped. What would he say? Well, first, that he just decided to return the purse. Apologize. Say that it was an unlucky day. And he froze in front of the door. He became so scared and embarrassed too. But he pressed the doorbell. Light footsteps were heard. The door was opened by a young girl who rode with him in the morning. Hello, here's your purse. Please forgive me, such passengers since morning. Someone runs away, someone vomits. You were just the last straw, sorry. The girl looked at him attentively. Come in. Mom said you'd definitely come. Mom? Yeah. A voice came from the apartment. Agatha, who's there? He would recognize that voice among a million voices. It was Isabel, and he couldn't be mistaken. Billy entered the apartment. The girl gave him slippers. Mom, it's the morning taxi driver. Isabel came out into the hallway. Billy looked at her, unable to tear his gaze away. She hadn't changed much. She even became more beautiful. Billy. That's how they met. Isabel spoke calmly, as if nothing had happened many years ago. Will you have coffee with us? I. I was looking for you. I know. Come in. He walked into the room. It was a large apartment, bright, with new furniture. Nothing indicated that Isabel was in need. Their apartment was much sadder, and the apartment itself was nothing special. He sat on the edge of the couch. Agatha and Isabel quickly set the table. Isabel. Billy, let's talk later. He understood that Isabel didn't want to talk in front of her daughter. They had coffee, and Agatha even asked if there was anything interesting about being a taxi driver. He told a couple of funny stories. After they cleared the table, Agatha said goodbye and ran off. Billy realized it was time. Isabel, I understand that forgiveness is impossible, but I specifically looked for you to ask for forgiveness. I wasn't sick. My mom made it all up. I behaved like a jerk. Nobody should behave like that. We even came to this city specifically to try to find you. We? Are you still living with your mom? She had a stroke. She can hardly walk. One of her arms doesn't work. I see. I have a question. Did you go to the doctor with your mom? Maybe she's deceiving you here too? Isabel, come on. I understand that you're upset with her but deceiving in such. How are you? I'm fine. When you kicked me out, I lived on the streets for two months, slept at the station. Then I met your boss's wife, the sweetest woman. She helped me a lot, sent me to her aunts. In general, everything is fine with me now, even better than it could have been. I was less lucky. When you left my life, everything started falling apart. I lost my job. They took away my apartment. I know. I came to the city when Agatha was eight or nine. Isabel, forgive me. I know it sounds stupid, but I can't live without you. You're in my dreams every day. Every day, you understand? Do you want us to be together again? If it's possible, I'll be the happiest person. Billy... I can't give you an immediate answer like that. I need to think. Leave me your address. I'll come to visit you tomorrow. He wrote down the address on a piece of paper and handed it to Isabel. I'll be waiting eagerly. As soon as the door closed behind him, Isabel called someone, dictated the address, and then said to check if Billy's car was parked or not. Yeah, check it, whether it's his own car or not. When you find out, call me. Then I'll tell you what to do next. 
She hung up. That's it. Now she'll finish what she's been dreaming of her whole life. Yes, revenge isn't very good, it's even bad, but she couldn't live peacefully when she remembered how much she and her daughter had to go through. There were days when she simply had nothing to feed Agatha. But it's all in the past. And Isabel was almost calm now, but then Billy appeared, and all that resentment came back out. The next day, Isabel went to Billy's place. She brought a cake. He didn't even go to work. He tidied up at home. His mother sat there, lips pursed in disapproval. Clearly, this Isabel wanted something. She'd probably demand alimony for all these years. When the doorbell rang, Billy rushed to the door, almost running. Isabel was beautiful. Hello. Isabel, come in. Are you alone? What about Agatha? Agatha is at her lessons. I haven't told her anything yet. Why traumatize her psyche if we haven't decided anything yet? Yes, of course, you're right. Come in. Isabel entered the room, saw Billy's mother. A smile appeared on her face. Hello, Mrs. Viola. The elderly woman smiled broadly. It doesn't look like you're struggling. Look at that diamond ring and expensive watches. The elderly woman smiled broadly. Hello, Isabel. Well, Billy said you had a stroke. And you speak so clearly. Oh, I can only talk clearly. But my arm doesn't work, and my leg doesn't either. The woman pursed her lips sorrowfully, and Isabel smiled. It seems like you're being poorly treated by some doctor. Usually, if speech is restored, then everything else should be too. Viola quickly glanced at Isabel. Did she guess that everything's fine with her arm? It's very convenient. My son is never here, but when he comes, he does everything himself. You need to be more careful. They sat, talked about nothing in particular. There was a tense atmosphere at the table. But Isabel seemed not to notice. She brought her a bottle of wine, insisted that Billy drink with her. He hesitated. I have to work today. Billy, can't you skip one workday for the sake of our meeting? Of course, I can. An hour later, Isabel left. I'll call you from home. Okay, I'll be waiting. Something was bothering Billy. But what? Isabel was acting strangely, as if he hadn't loved her years ago. It had been nothing, and she called. Come over, Agatha is spending the night at a friend's. Billy jumped up and ran to his car, and Isabel put the phone down. Literally five minutes ago, she received an SMS that everything was ready. She knew that Billy drove a company car, that the car was expensive, new, so he drove carefully. She also knew what was in the contract. If the car was damaged due to the driver's fault and, moreover, if the driver was drunk, he would be in trouble. Billy's car was cut off and slightly pushed. It rolled over. They took Billy to the hospital, where the analysis showed alcohol in his blood. The company billed him a huge amount. Billy suffered too, although not as much as Isabel would have liked. She would have given all her money to punish that family, but let it be like this. A few days later, Mrs. Viola called her. Isabel, help, Billy was on his way to you. I'll come to the hospital and we'll discuss everything. I think you need to sell the apartment to settle with the company. Stay with me for now, we'll see later. Viola took care of the sale. And Isabel, having waited for the documents to be processed, bought the apartment. However, neither Billy nor his mother knew about this. She went to the hospital. Billy greeted her with a smile. Well, I didn't make it to you in time. 
Viola was only interested in one question. Isabel, today I need to move things, like with the car. The woman smiled. And where are you planning to move them? To you. No. I don't need you. I'm very glad everything turned out this way. Although it's easier for you. You're adults, you don't have a baby in your arms, and you haven't lost anything except your home. So now you're on your own. Starting from scratch, like I once did. I wish you luck. By the way, Billy, your mom's hands and legs work just fine. I visited her doctor. The room fell silent. Isabel left and headed for the exit. Yes, she did it the way she wanted. Did it get easier? She didn't know. But now she could at least stop thinking about it constantly. <laughs>